Okay, we're going to go into Larry now. Here's a subject. 10% of our students, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, all the way through 12th grade, on average, 10% of them require remedial training after getting classroom training. The district is pitching to do after school and preschool remedial training programs with the same teachers teaching in the classrooms, now teaching the same students in a private setting. Great for the kid, kind of, except for why can't they train the same thing inside the classroom? What resources are they missing there to make sure they don't have this overtime, they don't have this remedial training, they don't have this kid coming into school early or late or having to reschedule a teacher's prep time so that the other 90% are now handicapped by the fact that the teacher doesn't have the proper prep time guaranteed by their contract that they're going to sell it back to the school to do more remedial training for the students that are being left behind within the classroom training. If we just listen to the teachers, ask them, what do you need to do your job? What are you missing in your classroom? What can we help you in your classroom with? Is there visual aids you like to have? Is there some benefits, demonstrations, hands-on opportunities for these students to embrace depending on how, what type of learning technology they have or what they're used to? But anyway, let's, let's go down. And yes, Rita, 10% is important. One child's important if it's yours. Okay? So treat it. Have a little empathy. 10% is a lot. Okay? You are making a big deal out of this 10%. Oh, right? yeah, I yeah. am. And those 10% of kids could be like my son and just simply don't want to do it. Thank, Thank you. So now, back to reality. Oh, Mr. Stern, go ahead. Your turn. Larry, what the heck, man? What the heck? You have control over the teachers, Larry. You have control over your staff, Larry. You have control over the resources you provide to a classroom, Larry. You're a board of director, 40 plus million dollars to be spent on 2,000 children. That's close to $20,000 a student. Larry, you have resources. You can use them properly. You can manage them properly. You don't have control over it. You're a rubber stamper. It's wrong. Take some responsibility. Stop making excuses. Stop blaming the kids. No, Larry. Best is not the can'ts. Larry, best is not the case. You have a responsibility. They have a standard performance they have to meet. The mere fact that we are on a watch list, not because they didn't meet the standard or the first level below that, we have enough students that don't even meet the other standard that we're being watched by Pennsylvania Department of Education, Larry. We have a job to do, Larry. Allocate resources to ensure the students meet a standard. Not try. You don't have a right to try. You have a responsibility to do. One of the other problems within this district, this government, government-run schools, no accountability. And I say, okay, I'm going to look at my own materials, so I don't have failure that goes off the side. Now, you no, no, Larry. No, Larry. You can't kick kids off to the side, Larry. No, you got to find a teacher, listen to them, find out what they need, let them be professional, do their job to make sure that student gets educated to a standard. It's that simple. That's it. That's all you got to do. It's really not that difficult to understand it once you have the right attitude, get the arrogance out of the room, get the nepotism and the cronyism and all the other BS that you provide to within this district. You need to follow the law, produce a standard, and meet that standard. How it became acceptable to do 10% and you've been on this board for a decade? How, Larry? How did you let these kids go by? 
When did tribe pride in the staff and cronyism and nepotism and, and intimidation that's taken place within his district take precedent over the students? When did circling the wagons because something happened become the priority, Larry, instead of let's take a look at our policy and make sure it doesn't happen again? Let's change policy so it doesn't happen again. Let's look at the 10% that we're having a trouble with, get the root cause analysis, listen to the teachers, and solve the problem, Larry. I'll back it up a second. So, you can go on forever, but not to belabor the point. If a student's doing good in class A and not doing good in class B, is it the student's fault? Can we not look at why one teacher understands the needs of that student better, has skills, talents, resources, and then we can emulate them in the other teacher, train our staff, educate our staff, share more documents and data and resources with our staff. Maybe they're doing good in uh, uh, chemistry class because it's hands-on and the math class isn't hands-on. Maybe we need to add some hands-on opportunity within math. Maybe you need to do something else. It's root cause analysis. You sit down and you listen to your teachers and ask them why until you get to the root cause. It's such a simple idea. Treat the students with some respect and realize that it's our responsibility as a district, as a government-run school, to educate them. Treat them as if this is a private school. Because I tell you what, the money follows the student. And if we don't take care of these students within our district schools, that money just goes to them, which is fine. If it's best for the student and we can't do it, more power to them. They should take their money and go to somewhere where they're respected and trained properly, not provided with a do the best you can and then we'll do some remedial stuff and we'll pay some overtime and make your kid come into school earlier and make them stay later because you're gonna follow this cookie cutter approach that Rita's abdicating. And Larry, raw materials, Larry, they're students, man. They're students. Thank you.